Hey what's going on guys welcome to your 10th Bootstrap 4 tutorial and in this video I want to talk about Bootstrap Navs. So with Bootstrap 4 we can easily make navigation sections on our website with a variety of built-in styles and ship with Bootstrap 4 a few added flexbox utilities. So first of all I just want to check out the documentation to see if we can have a nosy at the different kind of navs we have on offer. So if you go to navs under components and click navs there, then you can see we've got this base nav, then we've got horizontal navs, vertical navs, tabs, pills, uh, drop downs, etc. So let's just take a look at what tabs look like. These things right here, like tabs, pills look like this, etc. So we can use all of these different things, um, all of these different classes to create a nav really simply on our website. So I'm going to show you how to do that now. So if we jump back into the code right here, this is underneath the cards that we created in the last lesson. What we're going to be doing is creating a list of speakers with some placeholder copy for each one. So the speakers names, they're all going to be links in the nav bar. And when you click on one of them, it's going to show the appropriate information about them. So the first thing I want to do is create a title for this section, first of all, uh, H2 with a utility class of display four. Remember those display utility classes control how that text looks on the page. Display four is just going to make it look quite large. So let's create that H2. So we'll say H2 class equals then display hyphen four. And then we'll say meet the speakers. So let's first of all preview this in a browser come down here you can see meet the speakers right there so a couple of things I want to do with this first of all I want to move it into the center and I want to give it some padding so it's not squashed up to these things right here so we now have to do the central alignment we just say text hyphen center we've done that in a previous tutorial and uh, then to add padding we can use some different padding utility classes as well the way this works is by saying P first of all for padding then the direction Y is up and down X is left and right okay so why? Because we want it up and down and then we're going to do hyphen five. So we can add a number after this to kind of control how much padding we want to give it. And that looks a lot better. We could do the same with margin if we want. We just do M for margin. And again, we can do X or Y hyphen four, for example, save that. And that's going to add a bit of margin for us as well. Pretty cool. So there's our title. Now let's get on to the actual nav. So the way we do this is pretty simple. I'm just going to create a nav. And this is going to have a class equal to nav. OK, so that's all we're going to do for now. And then inside this nav, we're going to have a bunch of anchor tags. So a and then each anchor tag is going to have a class of nav hyphen link. That tells Bootstrap that this is a link and it's going to give it the appropriate style for a nav. OK, so let's give this a class of nav hyphen link. And then let's also give this an href equal to something. Doesn't matter what that is yet. But we're going to do that later uh, and then let's close this off and the net ninja is going to be our first speaker that's me and then we're going to copy this and we're going to create a couple more so one two three more uh, they're all nav links and let's just paste some different copy in here so the next one is going to be the web wizard and the one after that let's just delete this dude first of all is going to be what captain code I'm really original <laughs> with these names. Uh, and the last one, check this one. This is my favorite, the Angular Avenger. All right, cool. So these are the four speakers, right? And now we have created our nav. And if we check it out in this browser, right at the bottom there, okay, not looking great, but we've not had to do anything yet. Automatically Bootstrap has made this basic nav bar for us. And I think it looks okay for some kind of simple nav, but we wanna make it look a little better. So first of all, what I want to do is justify this content. So if we make this larger, we can see it's all on the left right here. We could justify it to the right or the center. I want to justify it to the center. So we've done this in a previous tutorial. All we need to do is come up to the surrounding element right here, the nav, and we can say justify content and then hyphen either end to go to the right or center for the middle. This is thanks to Bootstrap 4's flex properties. So if we save this now and check it out in a browser, we're going to see all that centralized. That looks a little bit better so far. OK, what next? I want to make them look like the pills. So remember on here, we could see we could do pills. There they are, look like this. 
we'd like this blue box around an active one. Well, how do we do that? All we need to do is add this class of nav pills. So let's copy that, paste it in here as well, save it and check this out in a browser. Let's see what's happened. Absolutely nothing. Why is that? Well, because it's only really the active one that looks like a pill, right? And it's active because it's got a class of active. So let's copy that and add a class of active to our first one, the Net Ninja, right here. So if I save that now and check this out in a browser, this time we're going to see that pill effect. Okay, so already this is starting to look a lot better. We've got our nav bar right there with the pills. Um, what I want to do is show you this when it kind of goes to a smaller screen. So you can see it's four columns right there, yeah? And as we go to a small screen, Let's have a look. Okay, they're just getting squashed and that no longer looks very good. Ideally, what we want them to do is stack up on this small screen, don't we? So how do we do that? Well, we can use a flex utility class on this nav. So we can say flex hyphen column and that is going to display them in a column. Right, so if we see this now, that looks better for mobile. But that's going to also happen for all screen sizes. So if we make it larger, it's still going to be in this column. Because right here, we're not specifying any screen size. We're just saying flex column. And it's going to take effect for all sizes from the smallest upwards. What we want is when we get to medium size screens, we want to then display them in a kind of row next to each other again. Well, guess what? We can do that. We can say flex hyphen MD for medium size screens and upwards hyphen row. So now if we save this and check this out, okay, there are a row there. Let's make it smaller. And now they should be a column pretty soon, right about there. Cool. So now we have a nice responsive flex nav right there. So there's one thing missing, right? The information about the speakers. So when we click on one of these, we want to display information about the speakers down here. So we need to do that next. So to do that, we need to create another element down here to contain all of that information in. So I'm going to say div, and this is going to have a class equal to tab hyphen content, right? I'm also going to give it that py5 for padding up and down. So it's got a little padding on this tab content div, right? So now Bootstrap knows that all the content for these tabs, these kind of links right here is going to go inside here. So each one of these really needs a different element to contain content for it. So we need four different elements in here, each containing content, which corresponds to one of these dudes. So let's do four different elements. We'll say div, and each of these different elements is gonna have a class equal to, oops, that's right, yeah, is equal to tab hyphen pane, okay? So now what we can do is pop some content in here. We'll do a H3, the first one is gonna be the net ninja. And then let's place some lorem ipsum down here. So let's head to this ninja website again over here. Let's grab a little bit more this time. So I don't know, like that much. Okay, and paste it in right here. So if we save this now, then we're not going to see anything at the minute. Okay, let's just do our others first of all, then we'll come back to it. So let's just copy this and paste it three more times. All right, save that. And do we see anything? No, we still don't see anything. Why not? Well, because none of them are active. Bootstrap knows that by default, we don't want to show these. Only when we click on one of these um, kind of items in the nav do we want to see one of these. But we can default one of them to active. And since the Net Ninja is active up here, it makes sense to make this one active right here. So let's add a class of active to that one, save it, and now view it in a browser. Now we see it. So only the tab pane with a class of active associated to it is going to show on this thing right here. Cool. So that's looking nice. But what we want is when we click on one of these things, not just to refresh the page, but we want to show the different content right here. So Bootstrap has a load of JavaScript, uh, which controls this kind of functionality. We just need to edit the HTML a little bit so that it knows what to do. So the first thing we want to do is come up to these links and add in a data hyphen toggle attribute to tell it what this is going to do. Okay, so we'll say data hyphen toggle, and that's going to be equal to tab. So now Bootstrap knows that this is some kind of tabbed navigation. And when you click on one of these, it knows what to do to show some content. So let's copy that for each one. Paste it in there. 
and there and finally there okay save that now that's not the only thing we need to do we need to associate each one of these links with one of these panes bootstrap doesn't know which one of these links is associated to one of these panes it's not going to guess you need to tell it and the way we do that is by adding an id to each one of these first of all so we'll say id equals um, we'll call this first one ninja this second one is going to be the wizard so we'll say id equals wizard the third one is going to be the captain so we'll say id is equal to captain the fourth one is going to be the angular avenger so let's call this one avenger id equals avenger okay so we've got the ids of the panes now we just need to associate them with these things right here and the way we do that is by using the href attribute right here so we can just pop in whatever id we want to associate with these links so i'm going to say ninja for that one for this one i'm going to say wizard and it's important that you add in the hash for the id this one is going to be captain and then this final one is going to be avenger have i spelled this right avenger okay so let's save that and now if i view this in a browser let's try clicking on these things okay as i click on them different ones become active and we can't see this content changing but that's just because we've not changed the content from each one so let's just do that we'll call this one the web wizard the next one is captain code and then the one after that is angular avenger i really like that name all right cool angular avenger if anyone's going to make a youtube channel about angular js i uh, strongly advise you to use this name angular avenger otherwise i'll do it at some point right fair warning so anyway save that and if we view this in a browser now if i click on this we can see the content is now changing awesome so that is how we can create a nav this is a really simple example right i advise you to uh, have a go at this yourself seems a little complex at first because there's a lot of different classes and things going on but once you get a hang of it dead easy i mean there's no javascript involved and this is all very responsive as well very good so that when we click on one of these in a mobile it still does the same thing but yeah i advise you to play around and then go check out the nav section of the documentation because there's a few more things we can do with them like this for example we can add drop downs all right and yeah a bit more markup but again really simple when you get the hang of it so there we go that is navs in action in the next tutorial what we're going to do is actually add a nav bar right at the top of the website up here